Hi everyone, so we are starting this week's vlog off the way that we finished the last one with a little health update, but it is going to be super quick this time, I'm not going to bore you to death for 8 minutes, but basically I said at the end of last week's vlog that I had been feeling really poorly for quite a long time. My Crohn's had started playing up at Christmas, um, but I also had some other health issues that had been going on for quite a long time and I hadn't got them sorted and it had gotten really bad over the last week or so to the point where it was really hard for me to walk and my legs are hurting so much and I've just got pain everywhere and it's rubbish <laughs> but um, I said I was going to call my doctor and go and have some blood tests so that is what I did today I called them when I got to work this morning and my GP called me back himself personally this afternoon and said that he wanted me to go down to the hospital and have some blood tests done and he's literally like got them testing for everything um so i had to have quite a bit of blood taken i've got a very sore arm now but i'm very glad that you know the blood has been taken they're gonna test it hopefully i'll get some answers he said it could be something as simple as the crohn's has messed up with you know my absorption of vitamins and minerals and stuff from my food because i am losing weight so i'm obviously not really absorbing anything um because of the crohn's and he said, you know, that can cause cramping in your muscles and all that sort of thing. Although a lot of this has been going on a lot longer than that. But I do think my vitamins and minerals are probably all very low. I do think I'm probably anemic. I do think I'm probably deficient in B12. And I do think I'm deficient in vitamin D. So um, hopefully if it comes back and that's the case, they can prescribe me some supplements to take that will actually work. And either way, we'll start getting some answers. So... That's that update and I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your kind comments on last week's vlog. I couldn't believe it when I woke up and there were so many comments um, because I don't normally get that much interaction on my videos and it just honestly meant so much to me that so many of you had taken time out of your day to write something nice to me and yeah I just really appreciate it. Thank you guys. We're just home from Agility and I just wanted to show you that the dogs don't really understand this whole shared car seat situation. Somebody doesn't really enjoy sharing and then Miss Winnie in the back when we're actually driving she just spreads herself out across the whole seat and Archie ends up hanging off the edge so it's not working so well so far is it guys not not going so well so far <laughs> hi everyone I filmed this clip a couple of times now and I don't I just keep rambling on and on and I don't really know what to say so I'm just going to try and film it again and keep it shorter and, and sweeter this time um but basically it is now Thursday so I haven't filmed properly for a couple of days um I don't even know if I've filmed at all to be honest um I've had a couple of really stressful days trying to liaise with my GP and my um trying to get hold of my consultant at a hospital and speaking to nurses and all that sort of thing and um, I've, I've just not really had much luck to be honest um, I'm not really getting anywhere with any of it the the long story short they want me to have a procedure done which I think I mentioned the other day and I've had a couple of them done in my life I have Crohn's disease so it's inevitable um, but the first time I ever had this particular procedure done was a very traumatic experience. I was only eight. It was when I was first diagnosed and it was an emergency situation. Um, it was extremely, extremely traumatic and I remember it as if it was yesterday. And so I, that was the real sort of beginning of where all of my anxiety and my panic and my fear of medical intervention and medical procedures started. Um, so since then I've had a couple of things done, I've had my teeth out, um, I've had other procedures done but I've always had them done under general anaesthetic because it's the only way that they, it's the only way I can have things done basically and don't get me wrong I'm terrified of being under general anaesthetic as well but my, the one thing I do prefer about it is that I don't know what's going on and I don't also have that feeling of being totally out of control when you're just sedated to have something done you kind of just feel like you're being forced around against your will where at least if you're totally asleep you have no idea and I know for some people that would be even worse but for me that's what I would prefer and basically because I want this procedure done under general anaesthetic it means that I have to wait longer 
um, to actually have it done. They do have appointments next week to have these things done just under sedation, but I don't want them just done under sedation. And I've spent the last two days basically having people patronising me and trying to convince me to do it their way instead of having autonomy over my own body and deciding what happens to my own body. They're all just patronising me and trying to get me to do it their way. Um, so I've basically been told that if I'm insisting on having this procedure done under general anaesthetic, then I'm potentially going to have to wait months um, because apparently they've got no emergency appointments, which I don't really believe, being totally honest, I don't really believe it um, because I've been down this road before. Um, yeah, they've said I'm just going to have to wait months and in the meantime, they're going to leave me with no treatment. They're refusing to start any sort of treatment um, without me having this procedure done, which again has never happened to me before. Anytime I've had a relapse, I've been started on treatment straight away. And when I asked one of the nurses, you know, I'm getting worse and worse every day, you're refusing me any treatment until I have this procedure done. Um, what do you suggest I do in the meantime? Because I'm getting more and more ill every day, it's affecting my work, it's affecting university, what shall I do? And she said, take paracetamol and use a hot water bottle. And if you have Crohn's or you know anything about Crohn's, you'll know how bloody ridiculous of a thing that is to say. I'm not bashing the NHS because the NHS has done so much for me, it's done so much for my family, but my experience this week has been really bad and it's left me with a really bad taste in my mouth and I'm thinking of being transferred to a different hospital to be honest because I've heard great things about my local hospital because that's another thing, the hospital I'm under the care of is like 50 minutes away from me, so it's a nightmare getting there to do anything. But um, yeah, so I'm not feeling great. I'm cooped up inside on this beautiful sunny day and I'm just, I was upset talking to my mum yesterday and I just said I feel like everything is slipping out of my fingers. All of my control, all of my hard work that I did at uni last year, everything I've tried to achieve at work, I feel like it's all just slipping through my fingers because of this illness, which no one's helping me with. And I don't know what to do. So I think I'm gonna have to speak to uni and see what my options are. I want to stay in the routine of uploading a weekly vlog, but I know that this has been a whole vlog of me just moaning and whinging and being ill, but I got a lot of comments on my last vlog and on my goal setting video last night saying that people really appreciate the fact that I just show my life how it is and I tell you how it is and I tell you how I'm feeling and that people really appreciate that so I'm thinking maybe I'm just going to, however this vlog ends up being, I think I'm just going to end up uploading it and what I might do is try and use this relapse as some sort of force as for a positive um and maybe next month's tea time with chloe video can be about living with crohn's or living with chronic illness um and i can draw on this experience for something positive maybe um but at the moment i'm just trying to keep as much of my life together as possible i don't know what i'm gonna do guys i can't even read at the moment anyway because i can't see properly um I'm genuinely quite concerned that I'm doing like permanent damage to my right eye because it's not working properly right now, which is a symptom of Crohn's. Um, and yeah, I don't even know what to say anymore. <sighs> that's, that's my life today. So it's now five to three. I've been sat for a while. <laughs> And I feel like just sitting there doing nothing, it's just gonna make me feel worse. So I'm going to have a little tidy and a clean up, I think. Um, my boyfriend's got a friend coming over tomorrow night to plan a trip that they want to go on. So I want the house to be tidy. And he was like, don't worry, I'll clean the house. But we all know that for most people, a man's idea of cleaning the house and then maybe your idea of cleaning the house tend to be quite different so I'm gonna give the house a little clean and tidy now I think um, just so that it's nice for tomorrow and it will make me feel better too
There we go. Everything is nice and clean and shiny. All done in here. And now I'm exhausted. <laughs> that did take me a little bit longer than I thought. It took me uh, nearly 40 minutes. So I'm tired. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. But the rest of the place is still a tip. It still needs doing. <laughs> but I'm just tired now. Um, but I think I might have a little tidy up in the living room. Because it is a mess. Um, and maybe I'll leave the rest until tomorrow. I literally can't even go for a wee in peace. Hello. Every time he follows me upstairs and sits and stares at me. And I can't even shut the door because the door doesn't shut properly. And he pushes it open. Hello. everyone it's been a good few days since I last spoke to you and I'm still in the same spot on the couch um, I didn't I abandoned the vlog basically because I just thought who is gonna want to watch half an hour of someone just saying how ill they are um, but I've decided to persevere with it keep going and decide at the end whether I want to upload it or not um, probably under a title like the reality of chronic illness or something like that because that has definitely been what my life has been for the last week and a half um I'm gonna sneeze I have a really horrible cold virus as well as um my Crohn's relapsing and I'm not feeling good um and you might notice that my eyes are looking pretty funky I don't know if the phone's gonna pick it up because obviously it's not a very good quality camera but my eyes are looking pretty funky. Um, I developed a condition called uveitis because of the inflammation in my body from the Crohn's disease. Um, other parts of my body are now starting to become affected. So uveitis is inflammation in your eye. I can't remember the exact part of your eye that it is, but I'm now on a six week course of steroid drops and two weeks of pupil dilation drops. Um, they have to keep your pupil dilated because otherwise it can become stuck to the surface of your eye and it can go a funky shape. <laughs> um, obviously I'd rather not have that. So my pupil is super big on my right eye. Um, because of that I have now had to stop going to work because I can't drive. Um, when your pupil is fully dilated like that it lets in maximum amount of light. Um, which means my sight is completely blurred. Um, if I close this eye, I have double vision. Um, and my left eye is kind of struggling to try and compensate for my right eye. So my left eye is not doing too good either. Um, so that was a massive drama rigmarole on Friday. Thankfully, I recognised the signs because I've had it before. When I was really poorly in 2012, I developed uveitis or iritis as they called it then. Um, so yeah, thankfully I recognised the signs of it and I got it looked at and I now have my steroids, but yeah, it means I can't drive. So I'm having to be signed off work. Um, so today is my first official day of not being able to drive and being stuck at home. It's quarter past nine and I'm already losing the will to live. <laughs> um, I don't want you to think I'm crying about not being able to drive, <laughs> although that is really stressful. I'm just upset because I'm having a really hard time actually getting any of the consultants or the IBD nurses at my hospital to take me seriously. And I left another series of desperate voicemails um, last night hoping that somebody would get back to me today. The joint pain now is intense. Yesterday I could barely walk. Today it is actually a little bit better being totally honest, but yesterday I could barely walk. Um, spent most of the day in the bath trying to ease the pain of that. Um, obviously my stomach is not a happy camper. Um, like 
generally I'm just not feeling good I've started to get lumps all up and down my legs now they're called erythema nodosum and they are another just external sign of inflammation in the body um I hated having to call work this morning and tell them that I'm not going to be in all week and possibly all of next week because I have to have these dilating drops for two weeks at least um I can't do any uni work because I can't read because I can't see close up um, if I try and put a, like an eye patch on to cover this eye to try and combat the double vision, this eye starts to struggle. So I can't read, I can't go on my laptop, I can't really do anything. I was doing some scrapbooking the other day because that was about the only thing I could do. Um, I'm just feeling really hopeless and genuinely like I just don't know what to do I'm just getting worse and worse every day and I don't understand how I can just be left and there is more to the story than just that I can't remember if I've explained it or not I think I did so there is more to the story than just that I'm not bashing the NHS like if I was a normal person who didn't have extreme anxiety they could have got me in a lot quicker but I just think like I haven't been dealt with in a very sympathetic or empathetic way and I think regardless of if someone's doing something exactly the way you want them to do it, when they're suffering and their condition is getting worse and you're a medical professional, you have to act and they're not acting. Um, but they should call me back today so we'll see what happens but I just wanted to update you guys again and hi Archie. <laughs> And I just thought like if I started filming suddenly and like I hadn't explained what was wrong with my eye then you would probably all be like Chloe there is something seriously wrong with your face. Um, but yeah so that is the, the current situation. Um, I'm feeling pretty awful and pretty upset and I just want to feel better. <sighs> we'll see. Um. It's full on snowing. <laughs> Mum's just dropped me home and it looked like it was, there was a little bit of sleet as we were leaving, but it is now full on snowing. It won't settle properly because um, the ground's really wet, but look, I better go and give the rabbits some more bedding because it's chilly out there. Oh, look how lovely it is. Hello everyone. Here is today's update while I stand here and look out at the lovely snow. You can definitely see my weird eyes now from this angle. You can see my creepy giant eye and my normal one. Um, it's gonna be like that for a little while, so I hope that doesn't bother you. Um, yeah, so today I've been out with my mum for a little while. I'm signed off work because I can't drive. Um, so I feel guilty going out when I'm signed off work, but at the end of the day, it's because I can't drive and I can't like read or see properly so I would be no good at work anyway but I can't just sit here and do nothing because I will go stir crazy and I'll just get more ill so I've been out with my mum today um, which was a nice distraction but also yesterday um, I can't remember what I told you and what I didn't tell you honestly my brain is just frazzled um, but my GP was trying to get the consultants at the hospital to agree to give me some sort of treatment now because I'm getting worse and they wouldn't agree to start me on a proper treatment but they did agree to put me on three months of steroids which I'm happy about and I'm sad about because I really wanted to avoid going on steroids they're not something that's fun to be on there's lots of side effects last time I got really awful acne and my skin I just was covered in this rash that was so painful my my skin was like sandpaper um, so I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen again they've put me on a different steroid so it might be different this time we don't know but um, basically they're a special steroid called budesonide and they target the problem at its source. So they get dissolved actually in the ileum or the lower part of the digestive tract, which is where my Crohn's disease is. So fingers crossed they'll have me feeling a lot better. I weighed myself at my mum's today and I've officially lost a stone since Christmas, um, which is why my little chin has finally come out to play again but I feel like I look pale I look ill and I just I want to start feeling better so I've agreed to go on the steroids and we will wait and see what happens from now but hopefully because I'm on the steroids now I will start to feel a lot better and I definitely feel a lot better in myself today because it's nice to 
to have some sort of outcome. So yeah, and I'm happy because it's snowing. So yeah, I've been out today. We went to my Nan's house and my mum gave me some old photos of my Nan and Grandad um, to put into a Project Life album for her. So I might have a go at doing that for the rest of the afternoon now because I'm feeling a bit more positive and happy that someone's listened to me finally and that I've got some sort of treatment plan until I can discuss more long-term options. I'm just excited to start feeling better. <laughs> everyone it's Wednesday today and I've just had another day with my mum um, I'm feeling a little bit better today since oh hi Archie uh, since I started on the steroids on Monday I already feel quite a bit better they really do kick in quickly um, I'm actually going to the hospital tonight for an appointment with a consultant I've never met before literally had the weirdest experience trying to get seen by a consultant this time. I think I'm actually gonna ask them to transfer me to my local hospital. But anyway, we'll deal with all of that later. I just thought I would show you a new project that I've started this week um, while I've been off for my mum. So yesterday we went to my Nan's house and she was showing us a lot of old photographs that she has of her family and of my granddad's family um, from when they were younger. And she has lots of photos of her parents and stuff. And my mum realised that she had lots of photos of my nan and granddad when they were younger. And when we were looking at all the photos of her grandparents, it made her think, like, wouldn't it be nice if all of the old photos I have um, were, like, sorted into an album and stuff. So I knew I had this spare album and I was like, why don't you give the photos to me and I'll have a go at making a little Project Life album out of them. So the album's a bit grubby, it needs um, a wash. But yesterday I started putting together an album for my mum of some of the photos that she has of her parents. And there aren't loads of photos um, at the moment. I think my mum has some more that she wants me to add in, but I've just started with what I've got. Um, I haven't stuck anything down yet, obviously. I'm, I'm just sort of playing around with things, but this is my granddad. That's my granddad and my nan when they were dating. There they are. And my nan had handwritten labels for a lot of the photos, so I've saved those where I could. And I'm going to add those in as well. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of you guys miss my scrapbooking, so I thought I would just show you this new little project that I'm working on. And I was showing these photos to some of my friends, and they were saying you can definitely see the family resemblance. My nan really looks like my mum, but my friends were saying that they think I look like her. But I don't know about that, but... I know that my mum definitely looks like her. There they are. And my brother really looks like my granddad. If you know my brother Liam, um, who's been in some videos, Liam really looks like my granddad Pete. But yeah, I mean, I know these are old family photographs, so they're not gonna really hold any interest for you guys, but I just thought I would show you because it's a scrapbooking project that I'm working on as if I don't have enough albums on the go but yeah it's nice I'm very much looking forward to getting stuck into it properly and sorting it all out for my mum I showed her a little bit of it last night and she was really pleased so I hope she likes it but yeah so it's just coming up to four o'clock now I've just cleaned the kitchen um the rest of the house is a mess but at least I've cleaned the kitchen um and my boyfriend's coming to pick me up at half past four because obviously I cannot drive and I've got to go all the way to Southampton for a hospital appointment, which is another reason why I want them to transfer me to my local hospital, I think, because this whole experience this time has been really stressful and having to like go to the hospital to collect prescriptions when I don't live anywhere near the hospital and all that sort of thing, it's just been really stressful. So I think it would be better for me to be transferred to my local. So yeah, I'm gonna see how I go about doing that. Um, yeah. So now I've got half an hour to just sit here with my scrapbook, <laughs> maybe have a cup of tea before Will comes home to pick me up. Bless him, he's coming home from work early to get me, so yeah. 
but I'm I'm starting to feel a little bit better guys I feel a bit more human but I, I still need to continue to rest because steroids mask your symptoms they make you feel like you're on top of the world and it's like you come back from the dead <laughs> just a couple of days after taking them but the truth is you're still actually very ill um, they're just masking your symptoms so I need to continue resting and recuperating um, if they're going to work properly but it's nice to not feel so bad while I'm sharing scrapbooks I thought I would share this one this is a purple we are memory keepers 12 by 12 d-ring album and it has all of my layouts and project life pages from birth up until I was about 14, 15 I think um, and I really need to separate it into two albums because the pages are starting to warp the album's so full and it's not even done yet but um, I actually made this album and I shared a flip through of it on my channel um, and I hated it <laughs> basically I just used all of the spare supplies that I had at the time and I really didn't like any of them so I decided a couple of years ago to go back and redo it and I'm still doing it. Um, I always take this album with me to the scrapbooking retreats that I go on so I'll take it with me in March when I go to the next one um, and I always work on this album there but as you can see the pages are starting to warp because uh, it's so full so I really need to separate it into two albums but it's all my baby photos and photos from when I was like a toddler and like pictures of my family from around that time like that's my dad and one of my big sisters and that's my mum, my sister, my cousin, one of my other cousins, another cousin, another cousin and my auntie and that's me and my mum, she was so young she was only 26 when she had me and that's only two years older than I am now it's just crazy um, I can't imagine myself with a child right now. That's my big brother. I think that's one of my big sisters. I don't think a lot of you know that I actually have an older brother, but there he is. That's my eldest brother. That's my nan, the lady in the photos I was just showing you. That's my nan. She doesn't look like that anymore. I feel like my nan actually looks better now than she did in the 90s. But yeah, I love this album. I don't know why I'm flipping through it and like showing you all of it um because eventually i'll film a flip through anyway but yeah i just thought i'd show you some of the projects that i'm currently working on because i have so many scrapbooks on the go i'm actually thinking of um taking a break from project life this year i was going to film a video on it but i don't know if i'm going to have time but um yeah i think i'm gonna skip project life this year and do something else but I'm not sure what else and um, that's my granddad who was also in those photos I was just showing you This is one I got 
Crohn's disease when I started getting poorly. Look at all these bee babies. <sighs> and then this is when I was really poorly. Look at all those presents again. Honestly, we were so spoiled. I've still got my badge, my little hospital tag. And I was being tube fed here, but yeah, that was when I was first ill with Crohn's. And this was my first meal after I was reintroduced to food. This is my first dog, Bonnie. And there's a picture Ryan drew for me when I was in hospital. There's another one. And a certificate when I got a nasogastric tube. Look at me, I was brave. This one I was eight, and then I got another one for having a cannula. <laughs> And then that's where I stopped. So I've nearly got to the end. Um, this is when our dog had puppies. So yeah, I'm, I've got a little bit more to do, but like some of it's already done. So there's a layout there that I'm just gonna leave as it is. I might add some gold splatter or something. And um, there's another layout there that I'm just going to leave as it is. So some of it's done. But yeah, so that is another one of my projects that I'm currently working on that I thought you might like to see. Um, I have so many scrapbooks on the go at the moment, it's a little bit ridiculous. Hi everyone, so it's now Friday. Um, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I had another couple of kind of rubbish days. Um, I think I maybe overdid it a little bit on Tuesday and Wednesday by going out of the house and spending time with my mum and stuff um, because I was happy to feel a little bit better thanks to the steroids but like I was saying um, earlier on this week the steroids kind of just mask your symptoms so you feel like you're better but you're not um, and then that's kind of what's happened I crashed again yesterday and felt really poorly I've still got this horrible cold which obviously doesn't help because you feel so run down and grotty when you've got a cold anyway um, so on top of everything, it's just not really helping. And I'm still having a lot of pain with my eye, which at this point, nearly exactly a week in to using the steroid eye drops, I wouldn't have thought that my eye would still be hurting so much. Um, so I have a hospital appointment this afternoon to check up on that. Um, and I'll just update you in the beginning of the next vlog with how everything's going. I'm hoping that maybe the next vlog won't be so boring and rubbish, just me whinging and moaning like this one is. But like I said, I wanted to upload it because I just feel like it might be valuable to someone. I, there is so much misunderstanding around Crohn's and what it actually is and what it does. And I just thought it might be useful for people to see some of what it actually does and like the fact that it can affect your whole body and you can have really random symptoms and stuff so um eventually I will hopefully film another tea time with Chloe video about Crohn's but I kind of want to wait until I'm a little bit better um I'm also waiting to hear back from uni about what to do about my work because I've missed two lectures this week and I just feel so behind with everything I just don't know what to do and I'm getting very stressed why is Archie barking I don't know um, but yeah, my neighbour was just coming back into their house and Archie was barking at my neighbour. Um, but yeah, also I just didn't really want to be on camera. I mean, I actually, I feel like I look alright on this, but, um, my skin has gone really dry and sore. I don't know if it's because of the steroids or what, um, or if it's just my skin. Um, but also I can't really see when I'm putting my makeup on, so I feel like, I don't really know what I look like um, and yeah I just I'm not feeling too great but in myself I feel a little bit better I'm just mainly worried now about uni and what I'm gonna do about my work and everything I just feel like I'm never gonna get anything done um, logically I know that I'll get there and that it'll be sorted but it's just all the uncertainty right now um, but yeah so I thought I would leave the vlog here I'll like I said I'll just update you about my hospital appointment um, 
in the next vlog. I hope that you're all well. I know this vlog has been boring. I'm sorry about that. I hope some of you get something out of it. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.